So yes, I was wondering if you so could much tell us a bit more about the inspiration uh, behind me, this, uh, well. uh, this piece. All right, excellent. Okay. Um, so uh, a big thanks to the organizers. Uh, thank you, Rita, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you all for, for listening in. Um, uh, well, as mentioned, indeed, there is a, uh, a, a Spotify uh, playlist. Uh, first of all, can you see my slides? Uh, is it moving along? Oh, yeah, here we go. I think, yeah. Yes, we can see it, Daniel. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so um, whenever I, I, I'll mention a particular song, I'll show the Spotify symbol, the Spotify logo, uh, and a particular um, number so that if you'd like, in the background, you can look up uh, the song and listen to it. Um, up to you. Um, furthermore, I, I want to point out that in this talk, I draw extensively from the following works on Afrofuturistic uh, music, uh, which I can highly recommend. Okay, so in the preceding paper by Rita Lucarelli, uh, we have been introduced to Afrofuturism and to Son Ra, a musician uh, who can be seen as one of the founders of Afrofuturistic music. And in this talk, I will discuss generations that came after Son Ra, um, his in, uh, artistic inheritors and uh, other children of the harpy, if you will. And here I will focus on music uh, created in an African-American context. This corpus is vast and I could never do justice to it in this uh, short talk. Uh, but as mentioned uh, by, uh, by, 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 by Lara and by, by Rita, there will be um, an exhibition in the Rijksmuseum van Oudheden in Leiden, the National Museum of Antiquities, which actually is scheduled for 2023. Uh, COVID has shifted our schedule. So um, this subject, I think, really deserves uh, more attention than it has received so far from Egyptologists. And today, let's focus on Afrofuturistic music that engages with ancient Egypt and Nubia. Um, Afrofuturistic expressions are works of art by individuals in the African diasporas. Afrofuturistic art is a refusal to define the past by the tragedies of slavery or by the middle passage. It recontextualizes or reimagines the past, be it glorious or traumatic, with the urgency of the present to change the future. Afrofuturistic narratives are counter narratives, political interventions in collective normative memory. Therefore, it is often rooted, as already mentioned, in Afrocentrism, a response to Eurocentric politics and scholarship. Afrofuturists argue that the way we understand the past or normative history is inherently political because it is produced and sustained by institutions like museums and universities. Um, from the Afrofuturistic perspective, the ways in which futures are created and imagined are just as political. Mainstream imaginations of the future have been predominantly white. Afrofuturists therefore want to claim futures so they may be invested in. And to this end, Afrofuturistic counter narratives reimagine the past to alter the future. Afrofuturist art has a particular interest in the ancient history of the African continent, in its art, its, its science, its knowledge, its mythologies, and its spirituality. Spe especially the cultures of ancient Egypt and Nubia have been sources of inspiration in part because these histories have been extensively studied, uh, but also because so many striking traces of this African past are, are still to be seen today. Um, ancient Egypt is interpreted as a quote unquote high civilization with inexplicable technologies and mythologies uh, that, um, yeah, you know, civilizations that created pyramids. Ancient Egypt is therefore transformed into new technologies and mythologies to replace Hellenistic and Enlightenment philosophies. Egyptian mythology and spirituality lend themselves well for Afrofuturistic fiction, as illustrated by uh, Rita. Sun Ra connected uh, Egyptian solar mythology to the cosmos and interplanetary travel and transformed himself into a technologically advanced Afrocentric pharaoh from outer space. Many Afrofuturistic musicians after him incorporated ancient Egyptian and Nubian aspects in their music and everything related to it, including performances and album art and uh, music videos. 
the history of slavery leads Afrofuturistic artists to wonder what it means to have a black body. If the racism of Enlightenment Europe denied black subjects their humanity, the boundaries between black bodies and robots become blurred. Enslaved people and robots become analogous, both condemned to forced labor. Afrofuturism sometimes subverts this narrative. Artists like Erika Badu and the Egyptian lover depict themselves as metallic robots, but adorned with a nemes crown and with Egyptian hieroglyphs, Egyptian Ankh signs. These robots embody several layers of time. Afrofuturism also explores the question of double consciousness in the Black experience. Double consciousness, a concept developed by W.E.B. Du Bois, um, describes the internal conflict of individuals in subordinate groups who feel compelled to continuously look at themselves through the eyes of the oppressing group. Afrofuturists may claim that in this context, the African diaspora is intimately acquainted with alien life. Ancestors were enslaved and abducted by aliens and transferred to a new world where later generations live in a society, uh, live in a society that, that treats them as aliens. So again, Afrofuturist uh, art may embrace and, and subvert these ideas, as we have seen with Sun Ra. Between 2008 and 2019, hip hop producer and DJ Ross G mirrored Sun Ra's approach. On the cover of his album, Back on the Planet, he is depicted as a technological space pharaoh. But also in the 1996 music video of the uh, outcast song Elevators, the concept of Egyptian aliens is elaborated. On a red version of planet Earth, a community is led through the jungle by outcasts Andre 3000 and Big Boy. But these scenes are revealed to be a sequence in a comic book, a comic book story called AT Aliens, The Outcast Encounter. The community is chased by military men and by men in hazmat suits. And through their scanning devices, we see that Outcast and their group are actually aliens with elongated skulls and huge oval eyes. The community flees and reaches a clearing in the jungle. Andre 3000 and Big Boy look into the distance and see a green landscape with ancient Egyptian pyramids. The community begins to rejoice and starts to run towards the pyramids where other aliens are scattered. Outcasts have found their home in an alien society that built pyramids in a scene that echoes Sun Ra's mission to establish a better life on another planet. Um, Afro-futuristic explorations of ancient Egypt are, at least in name and intention, post-colonial and opposed to Eurocentric perspe perspectives. So on a theoretical level, they are relevant to all students of Egyptology. In a uh, spirit of Afrocentrism, Afrofuturistic art often avoids Greek and Latin nomenclature that is prevalent in Western Egyptology in favor of more, uh, more or less indigenous words. So the Afrofuturistic, um, this Afrofuturistic preference for Egyptian terms aims to bypass the colonial and Eurocentric as aspects of the fields of Egyptology uh, that adopted and applied words, names and toponyms uh, from the Hellenistic tradition. For example, many uh, Afrofuturists reject the word Egypt, the Hellenistic designation of the country, and instead use uh, the word Kemet from an ancient Egyptian word for Egypt. On the Gospel of the Gods spell, Rasji refers to the triad of Osiris, Isis, and Horus by forms of their names derived from ancient Egyptian writing, Ausa, Auset, and Heru. Similarly, the Loni Plexico group created a song called Tehenu, the Egyptian word for obelisk. Sun Ra 
problematize the theories and concepts on which Western thought and traditions are based, including Egyptological scholarship. He rejected the division between myth and science, both Western inventions to his mind. In this regard, Itasha Womack points out that many African cultures traditionally did not distinguish between uh, science, myth, and art. Afrofuturism emphasizes that the scientific method is not as universal as we tend to believe. And this reminds us that research related to ancient Egypt and the dissemination of the results are by its very nature speculative. This is particularly evident when we reconstruct desolate temple landscapes, uh, conjure up images of individuals who were embalmed after death or claim to force sounds out of a diseased body. Even the way Egyptologists dress and present themselves shows us that the lines between Egyptology and fiction can be very fuzzy. Afrofuturism forces us to reflect on Egyptology's contribution to the pro production of speculative art. Eric Steinsgog highlights the Afrofuturistic concern with time by citing George Orwell's 1984, who controls the past, controls the future, who controls the present, controls the past. And Steinsgog continues, if controlling the future is dependent upon controlling the past, then obviously the futurism at stake in Afrofuturism is also about the history of the world, a history that can be understood as source material for the future. We see this in the opening uh, of the album, The Clones of Dr. Funkenstein by the funk band Parliament. In the prelude, they say that funk music is a prehistoric science that enables genetic engineering. Funk was planted in ancient Egypt by aliens and is used to shape new worlds. Um, Afrofuturists adopt what, um, what they broadly call African cyclical concepts of time. Um, Afrofuturist expressions then continuously negate time. Past, present, and the future are all part of the same cycle. And Steinskog cites Ross G, quote, you say futurists, I say timeless. Time encompasses everything, the past, the present, and the future, end quote. This view on time liberates one from traumatic pasts and allows for limitless futures. The music video of Snoop Dogg's 2015 song, California Roll, also collapses time. The song brings together musicians and genres of two different generations. The video transports an audience in 1946 into a future that blends the 1940s, a distant future, and ancient Egypt. Similarly, the cover of an album by the Egyptian lover entitled 1986 combines the 1980s with ancient Egyptian pyramids and a futuristic spacecraft. But I want to return to the notion of cyclical time, a concept familiar to Egyptologists as it existed in ancient Egypt as well in the form of neha, cyclical time related to the cycle of the rising and setting sun. And I, I want to argue here that in the music video of Erika Badu's song, Didn't You Know, um, it, it can be read, I think, as an, an, an Afrofuturistic interpretation of Egyptian cyclical Neha time. Perhaps inspired by Sun Ra, the video seems to be centered on Egyptian solar mythology. Um, the video opens with a beetle crawling through a desert landscape, in my mind, representing the scarab-shaped god Capri associated with the morning sun. And at uh, the distant horizon, heavy smoke drifts away from a flickering light. A spacecraft seems to have la landed from which Erika Badu appears in a futuristic outfit. She traverses the landscape, which, uh, as is later revealed, contains circular marks and abstract patterns that look as if they were created from outer space. The sun has now risen and um, you know, it permeates the landscapes. Erika Badu and the sun are often seen in the same shot, and the image of the scarab is overlaid on her face. 
the sun then sets behind the mountains in a scene that is reminiscent of the Egyptian Arket symbol. As the sun descends, Badu lies down to go to sleep while the moon rises. And at night, a lizard approaches her. I suppose the reptile is a representation of the snake Arpap, the enemy of the sun god that threatens the solar bark on its nocturnal journey. But Badu remains unharmed, and with the rising of the sun the next morning, she wakes up as if reborn. At the end of the video, she emerges from a pool of water in the middle of the desert. Her skull is closely shaven, and the imagery seems to refer to the Egyptian deity Nefertem, closely related to the sun, the sun god Ra, who at the beginning of time emerges from Nun, the prime evil waters. So this scene is perhaps a nod to the wooden sculpture from the tomb of Tutankhamun that shows Nefertem with the features of the king, in this case also with a closely shaven head. So how do Afrofuturistic concepts of colliding timelines and advanced technologies and space travel sound? Eric Steinskog has argued that bands such as Earth, Wind and Fire reimagine history by combining references to ancient Egypt, uh, African instruments and technological innovations. Maurice White, the leader of the band, began to incorporate the kalimba into uh, their music. This is an instrument traditionally used by the Shona people of Southern Africa. However, the kalimba used by Earth, Wind and Fire was electric. Um, and therefore a reinterpretation of an ancient African sound. The band's sense, soundscape thus fuses African traditions with technological innovation. In the 1980s, the Egyptian lover was a pioneer in electronic music using synthesizers, drum machines, and a robot voice. Technological innovation allowed the Egyptian lover to create a futuristic synthetic sound with electro beats and laser sound effects. The uh, Afrofuturistic music presents a triumph of technology. It's, it is empowering, but it does not dismiss the past. The music presents a sonic world where the human and the robotic overlap while the futuristic is encased in an ancient Egyptian world. Much contemporary Afro-futuristic Afro music is sample-based, uh, allowing artists to make diachronic connections. Artists are able to defy linear understandings of time by producing music that sounds futuristic while sampling songs from various earlier periods. And here, Steinscott's analysis of the track, 42 Laws of Mars versus 10 Commandments by Ross G is an interesting case. The music, the music can be read on a textual and on a sonic level. The reference to the 42 negative confessions of the Book of the Dead in the title of the track represents the ancient Egyptian tradition, here juxtaposed to the biblical tradition represented by the Ten Commandments. The track samples an old soul song that is rooted in the tradition of gospel music, signaling Christian religious thought. Simultaneously, the track is infused by a, a voice that shouts, O Ras, referring to Rasji himself, who arguably embodies ancient Egypt. Like Sun Ra, his persona reflects an intimate relation to the ancient Egyptian culture. Through the sounds in the track, Rasji challenges the Western Christian tradition by contrasting it with ancient Egyptian thought. So I'll end here. Um, if you are interested in this topic, keep an eye out for the exhibition that we are developing, uh, where we hope to show you much more of these fascinating art forms. Thank you very much for your attention.